Hello everyone. Cyclops Level Builder 104 is being released today, and uh, this release focuses mostly on a lot of internal stuff that you probably won't notice as a user, but uh, there have been a lot of changes to the underlying data formats uh, that are, is going to make a lot of future development work more possible. Uh, so if you have uh, your project currently in 103 or earlier, uh, please upgrade it to the latest just to make sure that you are uh, keeping up with uh, a lot of the more invisible stuff you might not be aware of. But of course, we're not. this is not just a uh, bug fix release. This also has some new features, which I'm going to be getting into shortly. Uh, but uh, yeah, download the latest, try, out, try it out, and hopefully this will be even better than the previous release. Installation continues to be a bit of an issue due to the weird way that Godot handles compiling GDScript. So uh, if you're installing this for the first time, and you can see here I've got a brand new uh, project open, what you can do is open the zip file and bring out the add-ons folder into your root directory here. And once that's done, you'll have this new add-ons directory off of your root, and you should be able to see that appear here uh, once Godot uh, imports everything. And you might notice some errors here. Well, um, uh, this is unavoidable right now, but uh, what you want to do next is go to your project menu and uh, go to project settings, and uh, auto load and we're going to add in a, a new script here click here and go to add-ons cyclops level builder and cyclops global scene.tscn click that click open and we're going to change that from cyclops global scene to cyclops auto load and we're going to click add okay and that should be fine and we're going to click close and now we're going to go to Project, uh, Reload Current Project. And uh, Save and Reload. And when it comes back, it should be set up properly. OK, and you see no errors this time. And if we open up a, if we start a new test file, we'll click 3D scene, and we can uh, then go to project, project settings, and make sure our plugin is enabled. Just click enable there. And now uh, you'll see a new Cyclops tab in the bottom here, and type create block, and you're now off to the races. Now, if you click on the block there, can see Cyclops not causing any errors in the output and your toolbar is right there. So I'm hoping to uh, fix this in the future or at least improve the experience but for now this is what you need to go through to get Cyclops uh, running. A new alignment field has been added to the primitive creation tools. You can see it down here in the tool properties and by default, it will be aligned to surface, which means that whenever you draw with the mouse cursor, whatever you draw is going to be aligned to whatever side of the primitive you start drawing on. However, if you're laying in something like a floor or a wall, you might not find this useful. For example, if we're working on this top floor and we just want to sort of extend in this particular plane, we can switch this to XZ plane. So now when we create uh, new shapes, it's going to be aligned to the, uh, the it's going to take its elevation values from the currently active shape uh, because of the match active block being selected here. So now if I click and drag over top of this block below here, you can see that that was made aligned with uh, this top block. And we can do that with other blocks as well to uh, get that alignment. And if we want to switch back, we can just go back to align with the line to surface. And now it's going back to the behavior where the block is going to automatically snap to whatever block your mouse is over when you start drawing. 
A new command that's been added to the menu is the ability to export your file to a custom uh, file format. Just come to Menu and down to Export a Cyclops file and type in the uh, path where you want to save your resource. Press OK. And this is going to export your file in a custom file format. And uh, you can see that right here in the file system. Uh, this is the file that we just exported. And the whole point of this is to provide a file format that is independent of the uh, Godot system. Up until now, we've been sort of completely reliant on the way Godot saves uh, files inside of resources. The problem with that is that this makes it extremely hard to change the data formats of your underlying objects, which is part of the reason why development has been uh, so slow. So. Uh, Hopefully, with well, with this change, it will be possible to save your files completely independent of Godot. So, if there is a change in the future that uh, breaks backwards compatibility, you ought to be able to re-import those old Cyclops files and uh, have your scene uh, completely independent of the um, system that uh, Godot provides by default for editors. To go along with the new exporter, there's also a new importer to import that uh, custom file format. So uh, here we have a new scene with nothing in it except the base node. And you'll notice that in the menu, we, there's this new Cyclops drop-down menu. And uh, if we click over to one of these other files, you can see there it is way on the left. But uh, for a completely blank file, it's going to be up here on the right. Anyhow, go down to Cyclops, import Cyclops file and we can browse to it. Click on My File Cyclops, click OK, and you'll see that just brought in all of those blocks we just exported, and uh, there they are in the side menu over there. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is that materials are stored by path names, so if you export a uh, file that has materials on it, it's only going to export the, na the path name of the material, so when you re-import it, if that material is not in the same location with the same name, uh, you'll get a uh, blank texture instead of the actual material. So just make sure that your materials are already in your project when you uh, import. The other new import feature added in this release is the ability to convert mesh instances into Cyclops objects. So you can see here I have a um, file that was exported from Blender as a GLB file and then imported into Godot. And in Godot here it shows up as a mesh instance 3D. Well, we can convert this to a Cyclops block by going to uh, the Cyclops menu, coming down and clicking on Import Godot Mesh Instance. And you can see that automatically created a new sort of wrapped cube of our uh, original figure. There it is there in the menu as cube two. We can uh, bring that out and then click on that and move it to the side. And you'll notice that uh, this is a bounding box because at the moment, uh, Godot's, I mean, uh, Cyclops still uh, forces everything to be a bounding box, but otherwise this is perfectly following the geometry of our original figure. And you can do this to convert your custom mesh instance 3ds into uh, the equivalent godot cyclops block objects also new in this release are transform spaces uh, you'll find these down here in the tool properties section um, by default in uh, all releases up until now you are limited to the global transform space which just means that the axes here on your move command are limited to the uh, global transform axes. However, uh, if you rotate your node like this, you might want to use local coordinates instead of global coordinates to move them because you might want to move them along the way the block is pointing, not uh, along the world coordinates. Well, what you can do is change global to local and you'll see that the uh, gizmo updates. So now when you move along the x-axis, the block is going to update. Uh, it's going to move in the directions that are local to the block rather than the global rather than the global coordinates. Uh, I'm going to skip. Well, normal for now. If you go to view, 
This makes the gizmo parallel to the viewport. So X is going to be uh, perpendicular to your viewing direction, so is Y. And Z is going to zoom in and out like that. And the uh, parent is like local, except instead of being relative to the um, uh, block itself, it's going to be relative to the parent of the block. And in this case, since the block has no parent, it's going to be local to the uh, world coordinate. Well, actually, see the uh, because the node 3D is the parent of the block, we're using the node 3D's coordinate system, which just happens to be the same as the global coordinate system. Uh, the last one, if you come back over here, is normal. And for the move tool, the um, normal is the same thing as the local. So uh, these two are going to be the same when you're using the move tool. However, if we come over here to the uh, component tool, that's going to be a little bit different. So if we, let's say, take that edge up, you can see we now have a bit of an angle. And if we go to face mode, and we change that from global to normal, you can see that the Z is now pointing along the normal of the plane. And when we click and drag on that face, it is going to move along the direction the plane is pointed, rather than along the local axis of the block or along the global axis. And this might be useful if you have something that's at an angle and you want to move it in the direction the face is pointing rather than uh, the direction the block is pointing. One more change in this release, and this came in from community member Dicklor. Uh, now, if you click on the tool buttons up here, you're going to see a little white icon appearing underneath the one that's currently active, which can make it a lot easier to keep track of what's going on. Uh, you can also, if you hover over, see a hotkey that you can press to automatically switch to the corresponding tool if you press it on your keyboard. Uh, now, this might change in the future, but uh, for now, uh, this is going to make it just that much easier to navigate when you're using Cyclops. And those are the updates. Uh, as I was saying earlier, uh, there have been a lot of changes to fundamental data structures as well as the new features. So please update to 104 to make sure that you have the latest and you are uh, the most future proof against any future uh, developments in Cyclops. And uh, yeah, please download it, try it out. Hopefully this improves your development process. Uh, if you like this, um, plug in and want to support me, please consider donating at my Ko-fi page or become a member on Patreon. And uh, that will help me make uh, more updates and uh, more, focus more on this project. And in any case, uh, thanks for watching and good luck with your Godot projects. Thank you.